Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have an update from a recent Kintour Pharmaceuticals press release about a new clinical trial clearance for testing the KX826 topical solution at a 1.0% concentration. This announcement was made on May 24th, 2024. This clinical trial was approved by the National Medical Products Administration, which is the equivalent of the United States of America's FDA in China. This marks a significant milestone in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia in China. This development aligns with my prediction, considering KX826, also known as pirolutamide, faced a setback in 2023 when it failed a phase 3 clinical trial in China. I mentioned that to show statistical significance, Kintor might have to test KX826 at a higher concentration. The trial's results indicated that the previous 0.5% concentration of KX826 did not meet the expected clinical efficacy, prompting many, including myself, to speculate that a higher concentration would be necessary to achieve the desired therapeutic outcomes. The recent clearance for the 1.0% topical solution aligns with this prediction. The company's preclinical studies revealed that the higher concentration significantly increased the retention of the solution on human scalp cells, suggesting a potential enhancement in clinical efficacy. So th this looks like a really good sign that Kintor is still pushing forward with KX826. So what is pyrolutamide for those of you who may have forgotten or if this is your first time? Pyrolutamide, with its developmental code name KX826, is a non-steroidal anti-androgen. It is specifically a selective high affinity silent antagonist of the androgen receptor designed for the topical treatment of androgenetic alopecia. Unlike 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutastride, which reduce the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, pyrolutamide operates by directly preventing dihydrotestosterone from binding to its receptors and hair follicles. This mechanism helps to prevent the miniaturization and eventual loss of hair follicles, a common consequence of androgenic activity on the scalp. The efficacy of pyrolutamide is underscored by its pharmacodynamics, where it exhibits a high binding affinity to the androgen receptor with an IC50 of 0.28 nanomolar. This extremely low IC50 value indicates that pyrolutamide is highly effective at blocking androgen receptors, making it a promising candidate for shielding hair follicles from the damaging effects of dihydrotestosterone. Also, the high affinity ensures that pyrolutamide can potentially outcompete dihydrotestosterone for receptor binding sites thereby mitigating its adverse effects on hair follicles. You see, when these molecules are floating around the hair follicles, they need to compete for the available androgen receptor sites. If pyrolutamide has a higher affinity or attraction to those sites than dihydrotestosterone, then pyrolutamide can outcompete dihydrotestosterone for the androgen receptor. Now, this IC50 score has only been demonstrated in vitro, so it could be the case that in practice, on an actual human being, pyrolutamide may be slightly weaker than dihydrotestosterone. If that is the case, researchers could outcompete dihydrotestosterone for those receptor sites by simply increasing the concentration of the molecule, in this case pyrolutamide, on the human scalp. In all clinical trials conducted thus far, concentrations below 1% of pyrolutamide have shown to be safe with no adverse systemic side effects. The primary adverse event noted has been mild contact dermatitis, which could be attributed to the solution the drug was formulated in rather than the active ingredient itself. This favorable safety profile at lower concentrations is encouraging, but it also raises the possibility that increasing the topical concentration could potentially introduce new side effects. While the 1.0% topical solution is a good start and likely to show improved efficacy over the previous 0.5% concentration, I believe that higher concentrations, such as 2% or even 5%, could potentially offer even greater clinical benefits. However, these higher concentrations might also come with an increased risk of side effects. It will be crucial for future studies to carefully monitor for any new adverse reactions as the dosage is increased, balancing the benefits of enhanced efficacy against the potential for increased local or systemic side effects. The progression to a phase 3 trial 
with a higher concentration of 1.0% topical solution reflects Kintour's iterative and data-driven approach to drug development. This adjustment aims to maximize therapeutic benefits and underscores the importance of dose optimization in clinical trials. The anticipated increase in clinical efficacy with the higher concentration of pirolutamide could give renewed hope for patients, providing a treatment option that could potentially surpass existing therapies like minoxidil and finasteride. So with all that being said, Kintor Pharmaceuticals advancement with KX826 topical solution at 1.0% represents a significant step forward in the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. The strategic increase in concentration following the phase 3 trial setback illustrates the company's commitment to rigorous scientific inquiry and, and patient-centric innovation. As pirolutamide continues through its clinical trials, it holds the promise of becoming a vital tool in the arsenal against hair loss, offering a novel mechanism of action and a potentially improved safety and efficacy profile compared to existing treatments. I truly think that further exploration of higher concentrations such as 2% or 5% could reveal even more substantial benefits, making pyrolutamide an even more powerful option for those suffering from androgenetic alopecia. However, the potential for increased side effects at higher concentrations must be carefully considered and monitored in future studies.